In the early years of the Second World War, engineers and quartermasters faced a problem that rarely makes it into documentaries, but honestly shaped nearly every frontline operation. Timber was everywhere. It held up barracks, carried ammunition, framed field shelters, reinforced trenches, transported food, and stored fuel. Yet untreated wood was a liability. It rotted fast, swelled under rain, cracked in winter, softened under heavy use, and turned into a sponge for mold and insects. With steel rationed and industrial output stretched thin, the military needed a way to turn cheap lumber into something that could survive frontline punishment. They needed wood that could take impact, handle moisture, endure heat and cold, and resist decay in some of the harshest environments on the planet. And they needed it without using metal or chemicals that were already being reserved for explosives, armor plating, and weapons production. That's when a forgotten additive stepped into the spotlight. A simple mineral powder mixed directly into paint that transformed ordinary boards into something soldiers swore felt closer to hardened fiberboard than raw timber. Supply crates lasted entire campaigns. Tool handles stayed solid even after months of heavy use. Field carpenters reported that structures coated with the mixture held up through monsoons and freeze-thaw cycles that destroyed untreated wood. This wasn't a miracle cure or wartime myth. It was a practical, field-ready solution using an industrial-grade form of sodium borate, what most people know today as borax. And the reason this matters now is simple. The exact same method still works. Anyone outfitting a cabin, shed, fence line, or survival structure can apply a version of this Second World War treatment and get results that rival expensive commercial preservatives. This isn't nostalgia or reenactment. It's usable engineering knowledge that has been quietly reliable for almost a century. The military needed a preservative that strengthened wood from the inside out. The wartime demand wasn't just about preventing rot. Wood had to survive transport impacts, rush loading operations, and exposure to every environment soldiers were deployed into. Quartermasters needed a treatment that hardened the exterior, stabilized the interior fibers, and provided resistance against fungus, insects, and moisture, all without requiring special tools or equipment. Borax delivered that perfectly. When dissolved in boiling water, sodium borati forms a clear solution capable of penetrating deep into raw timber. When mixed into oil-based paints or primers, it rides the carrier straight into the grain. Once inside, it raises the wood's alkalinity, creating an environment where rot-causing fungi and bacteria cannot take hold. As it dries, the mineral crystallizes, stiffening the lignin network and making it far harder for insects like beetles or termites to chew through. Soldiers quickly noticed the difference. Crates treated with barat-enhanced coatings didn't warp in monsoons, they didn't crack in the cold, and they didn't get eaten alive by insects in tropical regions where untreated materials deteriorated within weeks. The hardening effect came from real chemical changes, not wartime exaggeration. Many surviving field reports describe these crates as nearly bulletproof, a phrase that often confuses modern readers. They weren't armor, but the hardening effect was significant enough that minor shrapnel, splinters, and ricocheting fragments would often embed or bounce instead of tearing through. The reason was structural. 
Borate doesn't just sit on the surface, it bonds internally, tightening the fibers and reducing the flexibility that leads to catastrophic splits. For a military trying to stretch resources as far as possible, this really mattered. Longer-lasting crates meant fewer replacements, and tougher tool handles meant fewer breaks in the field. Reinforced wooden supports meant trenches and bunkers remained stable longer under bombardment or bad weather. In a logistical war where, you know, every supply line was strained, a simple mineral added to paint quietly saved enormous time and material. Recreating the World War II borate method is easy and honestly still extremely effective. Modern woodworkers, homesteaders and survivalists can replicate this treatment with nothing more than borax or boric acid, hot water and a can of paint or primer. The process remains straightforward. Just dissolve borax completely in boiling water until the solution turns fully clear. This creates a concentrated mixture that can be added to oil-based primer in controlled amounts. The wartime ratio was roughly one part borate solution to ten parts paint, strong enough to protect and harden, but not so concentrated that it destabilized the binder. Today, that translates cleanly into adding about one cup of dissolved borax solution to a quart of primer. Stir thoroughly and apply it directly to raw, unsealed wood so it can penetrate before drying. Once the primer cures, a normal top coat locks the mineral inside the fibres for decades. This method works exceptionally well on structures that suffer from ground contact or repeated moisture exposure. Fence posts treated this way resist rot and insect damage several times longer than untreated lumber. Shed framing becomes more dimensionally stable, avoiding the swelling and shrinking cycles that warp doors and twist joints. Gardeners can extend the lifespan of raised beds by coating the interior surfaces before adding soil. Even hand tools benefit. Applying a borate-infused coating to axes, shovels or hammers prevents handle softening and bacterial decay the same reason many wartime tools survived long after the conflict ended. One of the biggest issues with outdoor wood is, well, the constant expansion and contraction caused by humidity changes. This doesn't just lead to warping. It weakens joints, stresses nails and screws, and eventually causes cracks that let moisture seep even deeper into the grain. Borate treatments reduce water absorption drastically. Wood treated with borate takes on far less moisture, which means doors stay flat, beams stay straight, and panels remain tight. A backyard shed door that usually bows every rainy season can stay true once the fibres are hardened and sealed. This was the same reason wartime structures survived brutal winters and tropical summers with far fewer repairs. Wartime innovation still offers lessons for modern survivalists and builders. Not every wartime solution involved cutting-edge machinery or advanced science. Many of the best ideas were low-tech, reliable, and designed to work under pressure with minimal resources. The Borat paint additive was one of those solutions. It kept supply lines moving, protected equipment, and extended the life of field structures in conditions that would destroy untreated wood in just a few weeks. And today, when lumber prices continue to climb and weather grows increasingly unpredictable, this simple mineral treatment remains just as practical and valuable as it was 80 years ago. 
For more forgotten wartime engineering, survival methods, and field-tested ingenuity, make sure you subscribe to Warfront Survival and share this guide with anyone who appreciates the history we can still put to use today.